Hey, good, good afternoon. I am Saad Al-Aziz, the head instructor and owner of Semper Fortis Jiu-Jitsu. And um, today's video, what I'm going to talk about is I'm going to talk about, um, it's going to lead into a series of lessons that I want to talk about Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu history, mainly for my students. And I've been telling them that, hey, I'm going to start doing these videos. So for my students, family and friends to sort of watch and maybe learn more about Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu history, everything from uh, lineage to certain terms in Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, where they came from, and um, just just good educational stuff that I think people that are in the Jiu-Jitsu community should know about, and you know terms that you'll hear and you'd be like, what, what does this mean, or like, where does this come from? So that's what these videos are going to be for, and that's what I'm going to use this YouTube channel for. You can feel free to share the video with your friends that might be interested in the subject or not, or, you know, and um, make some comments if you've learned something from the video, or like if you agree or disagree with something I say in the video, that's your comments are more than welcome. And, um, and if you have questions about future topics that you're interested in, in the history of Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu and you'd like to know about, and you just don't know the answer to, and you fire the question off, and um, I will make a video, and uh, I'll do my best to answer it. So today's video, what I want to talk about is um, a very um, popular term in Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, although it's it's an insult, but the term is called is Crianje, and it's spelled C-R-E-O-N-T-E. And when I first came into Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, I would hear the term, and I might not even be saying it right. You know, like I've heard different um, pronunciations of the word Crianje. And some people be like Crianti or Crione, Crionje or Crianje. And I remember looking it up and because uh, I was like, okay, the Brazilians are using this term that I'm training with, so it's probably a Portuguese word. And it turns out it's not a Portuguese word. And I'm like, where did this word come from? And why is this, this word being referred to different people in the Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu community? So where Crianje comes from is uh, Grandmaster Carlson Gracie Sr. used to watch a, uh, in Brazil they just call it a soap opera, a TV show. And I think it was called Mandala, the TV show. And I might be pronouncing that wrong. But one of the characters in the TV show was called Crianje. And what Crianje, this character was, he was a very um, deceiving character. He would smile in your face, and then he'd betray you. He was, he was basically um, you know, a traitor that would deceive people, and um, that's, that was Crianje. So for Americans or you know, um, people here in the United States or even in Europe, um, probably the best correlation, a term that or at least the name of a character that you would be able to associate that would be similar to Crianje would be like if you watch Game of Thrones and uh, the character Littlefinger. Littlefinger appeared to be everybody's friend. You know, like if you watch season one, he appeared to be Ned Stark's friend. He was encouraging Ned Stark to um, do different things. And then when Ned Stark turned his back to him, Littlefinger had his knife to Ned Stark's throat and betrayed him. So in the Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu community, well, back to Carlson Gracie Singer. So what Carlson did is when a, there's about three or four students that left his academy and formed their own teams. And when they left, you know, it really upset Carlson because he considered it a, a betrayal. So he called them Crianjes. And that term stuck. And now it's commonly used within the Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu community for anybody that trains at a school or in an association and then leaves that school and goes to another school to train. So they switch schools or they switch, switch affiliations or you know they leave on bad terms and open up their own school. And so you'll see people in the Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu community refer to people that leave their school for other schools 
as creanche. So it's it's 100% an insult. So in the Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu community, you do not want to be referred to as a creanche. So if if they start calling you creanche at your school, it's not a good thing. So it's it's an issue of loyalty, and they're basically saying, hey, this person is disloyal. You know, they've left my team for another team. They've left my school for another school, and you know, they they're a traitor. And um, so let's take a look at that. Um, I'm not going to name the black belts who left Carlson Gracie Senior and formed their own team because they've they've got like 20, 30 years of um, insults behind them. And uh, you know, if you Google it, um, I haven't Googled it, but you could probably Google it and find out who these guys were. But what I will say is if you are in the association, in, like here in San Antonio, there's, there's, um, there was two different associations here in town that were formed by the guys who were the original Creanjes that Carlson Gracie Sr. tagged as Creanjes. So what I would say is if, if you're in one of those associations that was formed by the original guys that Carlson labeled as Creanjes, you should not be calling people Creanjes when they leave your association. It's like, dude, if you're, it's sort of like if, if you're Satan, you don't get to call nobody else a devil. It's like, dude, that's your term. It's on you. Not, not that I want to, I shouldn't make the comparison of between Satan and the Creon Chase because really people leave for various reasons. Um, I think the difference was for Carlson Sr., he was angry at these guys that left him his black belts. And um, so he gave them this unfavorable term. And unfortunately, the term has just spread in the Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu community. And I wish it hadn't. Um, and I wish it would, we would just do away with it because it's not serving any purpose. And it's, um, it's disingenuous. Like, I have a good friend, for instance, who um, he's gone from white belt to black belt with the same teacher, which I admire. He's been very loyal to his teacher. Um, he's dedicated to his team. And we're having a conversation. And, you know, he was talking about how, you know, today's practitioners are so disloyal and they're crianges and they don't understand commitment and loyalty and keeping their word and I was like and I want to make sure I don't say this guy's name but I was like my friend I'm gonna use my friend I said man I've known you for over 20 years and true you have been loyal to your Brazilian Jiu Jitsu instructor you've been loyal to your team but in those 20 years that I've known you in our friendship You've been married and divorced four times. So I think you should tap the brakes on your loyalty lecture. Four times. You know, because, you know, when you get married, you know, you say, man, till death do us part, you know, for better or worse. But four times he said that, and then four times he got divorced. And I'm not saying he was wrong to get divorced. Although I think in two of those cases, he had an affair. <laughs> But I digress. What I'm saying is that when two people separate, there's more to it than just, you know, like there's more, there's two sides of the story. And sometimes two people who are good people will separate and there's not a bad person. It was just this relationship was not good for each person. So I don't think we should call anybody Creanche in Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. And I think it's dishonest. You know, it would be dishonest for me to call somebody a Creanje because, like, I've had students leave my school for other schools in town. I never like it when it happens. I mean, it's like, because it hurts your feelings. It's like, it's a, you know, you, you start being rejected. You know, so, yeah, it's like, you don't like it. But, you know, like, people switch schools for various reasons. And sometimes it may be my fault. But I don't call the school, the students that leave me Creanjes because... To be fair, if I called them Creanches or Little Fingers, you know, for the Game of Thrones, I think I think we should just, if you're going to, don't call somebody a name from a TV show you ain't never seen. But if you've seen Game of Thrones, I guess you could call them Little Finger. But I, I think we should be bigger than that. So I've had a number of students 
who have come to my school from other schools here in town. You know, they left their school for whatever reason, and I never ask them what the reasons are because I'm friends with a lot of the jujitsu um, school owners here in town, and I don't want your first impression coming to my school being bad mouthing your previous instructor or school. It's like, no, okay, you're here, um, you was a blue belt, you was a purple belt, you was a brown belt, black belt at your last school, now you want to train here. Okay, cool. Welcome to the team. Don't want to know why, you know, so I'm not going to ask why because I don't, I don't want you to bad mouth somebody that may be my friend. And when they train at my school and they've, they've switched teams to my school, if I called, out of fairness, if I called the people that left my school, Creonjes, for another school, then I should call these people that joined my school from other schools, Creonjes. And I can guarantee you there is not a school in the world that does that. There's a number of instructors or school owners that will call people that leave their school for another school, Creonjes. But not one of them will call people that leave other schools for their schools and accept them as a student and then start saying, hey, I'm gonna show this arm bar this time and I'm gonna show it on this Creonje that came to me from this other school in town. You don't do that. That'd be a horrible business practice. It'd be a horrible human relation. And then you wouldn't have to worry about that person being your student too long because you would only be insulting them so long before they found another school because they realized, you know, you're nuts. So I don't call People that leave my team, Creonjes, and I don't call people that leave other teams to join my team, Creonjes, because some people leave for various reasons. They might leave because maybe they think I'm a jerk, or they might leave because, um, you know, they move to another side of town, and there's a school that's closer to them that's better for them. You know, it's a better drive. They might leave because maybe I don't offer something, you know, that they're interested in. Like, I don't, I don't teach any no-gi jiu-jitsu classes. My students compete in a lot of no-gi, but I don't, I don't teach, all my classes are in gi. Every once in a while I do a no-gi. But there's schools in town that only do no-gi. And that's great. And if that's what you love, and it's like, man, I wanna do no-gi jiu-jitsu, it's like, dude, go train with the guys that, you know, they specialize that, that's what they enjoy doing. You know, like, the, it's not, I shouldn't take that as an insult. It's like, no, this is just isn't for me. Or like, I have guys come in and they want to be MMA fighters. And um, I don't run an MMA program out of my school. As a matter of fact, the last time I taught at an MMA school was in North Carolina. I vowed I would never teach at an MMA school again, let alone own a school that ran an MMA program. I just don't want to, I just, MMA is just not my thing. I don't want to run a striking program. I'm not going to get a cage. So when I get guys that come in and they're like, hey, I want to be an MMA fighter. Great, you want to be an MMA fighter. This is not the school for you. But there's schools in town that have excellent MMA programs, and I'll refer my guys to them. Like, dude, if you want to be an MMA fighter, Ohana has an excellent MMA program. They've put people in the UFC. BTT, Brazilian top team here in town, excellent MMA program. They've put people in the UFC. Rodrigo Pinero, you know, him and Pete Spratt. Pete Spratt fought in the UFC. And they've got an excellent MMA program. So I would refer them to those schools because it's like, my school is not gonna be for you, you know, because we're not, we're not gonna run an MMA program here. So sometimes they just have to go to a school so they can pursue their dreams. And that's not, that's not a, a they're not being disloyal. They're just, their dream is, if, if their dream is to fight MMA, then dude, you should, you should train at a school that's gonna help you get ready for that. If you're, if you want to be, if you just want to train no gi and you never want to put this gi on, then like, you know, 10th Planet um, Jiu Jitsu. Excellent no gi Brazilian Jiu Jitsu program. They're phenomenal. And I would refer people over to them because I've seen their instructor. Um, I know he's got, he's a good guy. Um, it'd be like, dude, if you want to do no gi, 10th Planet would be a phenomenal school for you. Um, and not that there's not other schools that also have no key programs. Just my school isn't going to be the one. So every once in a while I have a customer walk in, be like, hey, when are your no gi classes? Ah, I can loan you a gi, but uh, I'm not doing any no gi classes. And then they turn and walk right back out, and that's cool. And then sometimes a student will be here, and they'll, they'll just, you know, they'll be here for a while, and they'll be like, I really want to do no gi, and, you know, you're just not teaching no gi that much. And it's like, well, it's cool, man. But there's schools here in town that do. And if you want to go to them, that's cool.
So I'm all about not calling people Creanges. So that's the history of the Creanges. And for instructors, school owners, I'll say this. Like, if you constantly have people leaving your school for other schools here in town, the problem is probably not those students. The problem may be you. And sometimes you have to look internally. It's like, dude, what am I doing that's causing my students to go someplace else? You know, so like, as I talked earlier, like, when I lose students because they want to be MMA fighters, I totally understand. And I support that. When I lose students because they want to, you know, train only in no-gi or they want to do a lot of no-gi training, I totally understand that. You know, or when I lose students because, you know, like, my school is on the east side of San Antonio and they have moved to the west side of San Antonio. Now it'd be maybe a 40 minute commute, maybe longer with rush hour. Why should they drive by all those good two schools to just to come to my school? I totally understand there's a school five minutes away from you and it's an excellent school because here in San Antonio, there's probably like 25 schools that teach Brazilian Jiu Jitsu and they're all good schools. You know, like I can't think of one school that would be like, I think they're teaching, you know, what's that, Rex Kwando or fake, you know, like a fake martial art. You know, like, no, the 25 schools here in town, they're all good schools. You know, so if a person that moves to the west side and they're like, hey, it would be better for me to, you know, go to the school that's closer to my house. It's like, man, I totally understand. And I can't be mad about that. Um, and I'm not mad about him. You know, sometimes I'm disappointed. You know, I'm, I'm never happy. It's like, oh, I just lost a student. And, you know, maybe I've invested in this student. But, you know, like people switch, you know, they switch schools because... You know, for whatever reason. And if they tell me on the way out, they're like, hey, you know, this is the reason. You know, like, if you're leaving because of MMA, I can't fix that. You know, I'm not going to run an MMA program. If you're leaving me because you want to do more no gi, yeah, I totally understand. Or if you're leaving me because, you know, there's something I'm doing. Like, if I'm being a jerk, then, you know, like, man, it'd be nice if you tell me on the way out. Like, hey, you're being a jerk. And then I, I can reassess that. Like, maybe I need to see why are people leaving me. So I always think that, you know, like anytime I see a person that's constantly losing students to other schools, it's like, what are you doing, you know, that's causing this? You know, like you have to invest in the problem. Matter of fact, I used my very first ship I used to work for a master chief, and we used we joke on him all the time, and because uh, he, in passing, you know, like one of his favorite sayings, he'd be like, "I'm an excellent judge of character." And I can tell when somebody's full of crap. I'm an excellent judge of character. He'd always say this. But he had mentioned one time that he had been married and divorced six times. And it's like, maybe you're not such an excellent judge of character. But we wouldn't tell him that to his face because he was a master chief. Anybody that knows how the Navy runs knows you, you just don't, you don't um, disrespect a master chief in person. Um, but, or maybe he was a good judge of character, but he was the problem. Because if you've been married and divorced six times, Maybe it was your spouse, but then maybe it was you. So if you're constantly losing students, maybe you're the problem and you need to reassess, you know, what you're doing. And I do that constantly. You know, like I've lost students, you know, to other schools in it, you know, like who were, you know, I considered personal friends. It was like, man, I can't believe this person's leaving me for another school. And I have to reassess like, man, what am I doing, you know, that, you know, what could I do better that maybe these people would have wanted to stay? You know, what can I change to where, you know, maybe this won't happen in the future with future students? But rather than being mad at the people that leave, you know, look internally, like, what are you doing? So that is the Crianche. It's Carlson Gracie Sr. talking about students, in particular, black belt, that let him inform their own teams. And he was mad. And he named him after a character. He named an insult after a villain character in a popular TV show he watched in Brazil. I believe the show was called Mandela. But the character was Crownje. But if you don't know what the character was about, it's the same thing if you watch Game of Thrones and you call somebody, dude, you're just like Littlefinger. Like, okay. If you've watched Game of Thrones, you know being called Littlefinger wasn't a good thing to be called. It's like, ah, that's bad. 
But that's Crianje. And like I said, I'll talk about future topics in Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu history. This just happened to be the one that came up because I'd, I'd seen a lot of people on social media talking about Crianjes leaving schools. And I'm like, you know what? I think that's going to be my lesson for the week is uh, let's talk about where this insult came from and whether we should even be using it anymore. And my vote is stop calling people Crianjes. That was Carlson's insult for the people that he fell out with. We don't need to carry on that tradition. There's some traditions we need to carry on in Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu. That tradition, I think we should let go. And as martial artists, I think we should be bigger than simple name calling. So don't call people Crianjes. All right. I'll talk to you all again next week. And like I said, if you got a question, a historical question, fire away. And uh, I'll do my best to give you an answer. See you all next week.